Hi everyone, welcome to my wheelchair accessible house tour. I'm Jen, this is Wheels No Heels. As you've just seen, I am very lucky because I have a disabled bay right outside the front of my house. I also have a lowered curb, which makes it so much easier for me to get up. So as you get to my front door, you'll see I have a few little steps, but there's actually a hidden ramp that Sean made under the doorstep. This makes it so much easier for me to get through the door. Quick wipe on the mat that's fitted down here. And we're into the entrance hall. But more about that later. Coming into the lounge, you will notice that all of the furniture has been pushed to the side of the room. This makes it really nice and easy for me to navigate. You will also notice that our house is quite minimalistic so we don't have lots of things lying around and cluttered up anywhere. Now one thing I suffer from is a lot of pain. So in the evenings it's really important to me to have a nice, big comfy sofa. We love sitting here as a family. There's nothing worse than losing things, especially when you don't have as much mobility as others. That's why it's always very handy to have things close by, organised and in one place. As you can see, our house is completely open planned and open out and we like to let as much light in as possible. In the winter, however, we like to make it nice and cosy by pulling the curtains. One thing that can be really expensive when you're disabled is your heating bills, but while we've got these curtains here, it makes it nice and cosy in here and we can light the fire and make it all nice and Christmassy. This is the dining room, but we don't actually use it as a dining room. This is where all the magic happens and I do all my editing. What's really great is that my wheelchair can fit nicely under this table and I can sit here and work and edit wheels, no heels. Also, remember the basket situation I was talking about in my wardrobe tour? Come and have a look at this. So here I've got everything to hand and this is where I keep all of my camera equipment, bits and bobs in a handy basket. Oh, I think the cat needs feeding. As you come through to the kitchen, you'll notice that we've taken the door off. This makes it so much easier, you don't have to worry about the doors. One thing that you'll notice is that everything I need is much, much lower down and all of the cat food and dog food are in these really handy containers. Oh, it stinks. Obviously, I don't have a pedal bin because there's nothing worse than a pedal bin that you've got to open with your foot. So we've got a nice, easy, flippy, liddy bin. Okay, so over here is where we keep all of the plates and the bowls. And what I tend to do is try and keep one plate and one cup for the whole day. So I will usually eat things like toast and cereal when I'm on my own in the house. And if I keep to one plate throughout the whole day, that saves on more work for yourself, like washing up. So in the higher cupboards, the top shelves are for things that I don't need at all. And then on these shelves are the things I do need. Up here is a little bit high, but I'll show you a little trick to how I get up there. So if I take my legs off of the foot plate, now remember I have got some muscle groups that do work, such as my quads, so I can kind of lift a little bit and lean and reach up and get the peanut butter. <laughs> so 
Something else which is super, super handy is the claw. <laughs> I have this uh, claw grabby stick. Um, I got this through my occupational therapist. So if I can't reach anything, I can get it with the claw. Woo! <laughs> Let me show you my favourite gadget in the kitchen. I was bought this for my birthday last year. It's one of those Nespresso coffee pod machines and it is amazing. I highly recommend these because all you've got to do is press a button and off you go. All of the appliances are down nice and low and one thing that I couldn't live without is my dishwasher. Getting to the fridge and freezer is really nice and easy. We chose a relatively small, slimline fridge. Mm. With our freezer, it's nicely organized into drawers, which is so good because I can just look in there, see what I want and get it out. Lots of you have been asking me about cooking and I'm actually lucky enough I've got my own personal chef. <laughs> What's on the menu chef? As you know I live in a two-story house and we are really really lucky that we have got a downstairs toilet. I think it's absolutely essential if you're disabled living in a two-story accommodation. It's a bit tight but I can do a pivot transfer here. This isn't actually a towel rail, this is a reinforced grab rail which I can use to get onto the toilet. You may think that this is a bit weird and I know my family do sometimes but we actually clean our teeth down here in the mornings and in the evenings because once I'm downstairs I'm pretty much downstairs for the whole day. Above the sink we've got this lowered medicine cabinet which is perfect, I can reach everything woo, that I need. Out of the toilet we come into the conservatory, we've got this really cool chalkboard that Daisy loves to draw on. The dog sleeps in here, we can shut her away at night. Basket with all her toys so I don't run over them, I can put them away easily. We've got this really cool little bar area where we can sit and have pancakes on a Sunday morning and then it leads straight out with level access to the garden. So this is our little garden. We're really, really lucky to have it, especially in England where there's not that much space. We've got this lovely little sitting area where we can sit out and have a cup of tea in the sun. We've got a lovely parasol as well. Sean has got some plans to spruce this up, so we might show you those later on in the year. But it's a bit cold outside, so let's go back inside and have a look upstairs. Rolling on the tiles is really nice and smooth and easy. One thing that we do have throughout the whole house is carpet. It does make it a lot harder to navigate on in your wheelchair, but in this country, in this climate, it keeps it nice and cosy. One thing that I can't do is hoover, so I do leave that to Sean. So here we are at the entrance hall. We have our shoe rack. Remember I was talking about baskets? This is where Daisy keeps all of her hair accessories so she can find them in the morning and do her hair before school because there's nothing worse than, where's my hairbrush? Where's my hair bands? So they're all kept in this basket. Our coat rack up there, which I can't actually reach to, but good old Sean, he puts my coat up there when I need him to. And the biggest question on people's lips is, how do I get upstairs if I live in a two-story house? Well, my friends, now your question has been answered because I have this very lovely stair lift and we're super lucky that this stair lift was in this property when we moved in. Another way I like to get up and down the stairs is by bum shuffling because I like to keep myself as active as possible. Okay, come here because I want to show you something really cute. When we moved in, we did hand prints and we also did paw prints for the cat and Booge as well when she was a puppy. So it's February 2014. So I'm really lucky that I have got another wheelchair that I can keep upstairs to get around in. Oh, yes. So this is the upstairs, we're really lucky. We have three bedrooms. We've got a little bedroom at the front there where it's kind of like a bit of one of those junk rooms, do you know what I mean? It's a little like cave. Sean kind of keeps all his clothes in there. Then we've got the messiest room in the house. This is Daisy Bell's bedroom. Just go and take a look in there. No angel. 
strikes me up. This is so cute. Um, since Daisy was born, we have been keeping track of her measurements. We've also got my measurement and Sean's measurement up there as well. We have actually got all of the doors on the bedrooms because obviously you're going to want a bit of privacy at night, aren't you? So let's go and have a look in our bedroom. Okay, so this is our bedroom and one thing you'll notice is that we haven't got loads of furniture around. Here we have got my accessible wardrobes and I'm not going to show you those because if you want to see inside my wardrobe, which I highly recommend you do, go and check out that video there. This is our bed. I absolutely love this bed and I think when you've got a spinal cord injury and you suffer with a lot of pain, it's very important to think about investing in a good bed. It's a great height for me to transfer in and out out of the bed. If you want to see me transfer in and out of the bed then go and check out my transferring playlist because that's really really useful. We've actually got Simba mattresses which I highly recommend. They are great because they regulate your um, body weight um, helping you with any pain that you may have and they also regulate your temperature as well. With this bed, it is actually um, a maneuverable bed, so I can put it into like a zero gravity position and it takes off the tension in my back, which is so, so comfortable. One thing that I would always recommend is that you have everything to hand before you go to bed because you don't really want to be getting up in the middle of the night unnecessarily. So I always make sure that I have a torch and I have my water and I have medications as well, but I'll be talking about that a little bit more in my nighttime routine videos. Make sure to subscribe for that. From the bedroom, it is an easy roll into the bathroom. Into the bathroom, and it is a bit of a tight squeeze. It probably would be a good idea to have a sliding door on here. Obviously, we can't take the door off because we're going to want a bit of privacy. Sometimes I have to reverse in to the bathroom. Come closer, come closer, have a look. So this is my bathroom setup, which you probably would have seen in my transferring in and out of the bath and my shower hacks, which I highly recommend you go and check out if you haven't seen them previously. But as you can see, I have got a bathing board. This helps me, enable me to transfer onto the bathing board and have a shower, or I can transfer down into the bath. And I've got my grab rails there that have been put in and they are really, really like, what's the word, robust. Before I get into the bath, I make sure that I am prepared. So down here is where we keep all of the shampoos in a handy basket. So I will always take out like, the shampoos and conditioners. We've got a basket here where I keep all of my face things and we've also got a really handy Nutella glass to keep all of the razors in as well. Before I get in the bath or shower, another thing I do is make sure that my towel at a hand. We've got a concertina um, shower screen there and then we've got the um, shower hose which is <laughs> leaking all over me here um, and also this is such a handy little hack is we put the soap in a washing detergent bag and then we hang it on a hook and then it's really easy to get to and it's not like slipping and sliding everywhere. What I absolutely love in the world is to have a bath. When I'm in so much pain, I get really cold and achy. The best thing for it is to have a nice hot bath and it's just dreamy. So I think Sean and I work as a really good team. He's got his jobs and I've got my jobs. One of my jobs is to do the washing. This is our communal washing hamper. So I can just take off the lid and then I can pull out the sack, do it up and then some tasks may take a little bit longer and a little bit more effort than other people but it does when you're in a wheelchair. Okay my friends that is it for this house tour. You may not realise it but quite a lot of planning went into this. I'm pretty exhausted now so I'm going to sit back, relax and watch my favourite YouTuber.